Hey what's up guys it's Jonathan with Referee Moto and I'm excited because my lowrider ST as many of you may know if you've been watching the channel I recently installed some tab performance slip-on exhaust and with the medium baffles and um, I now am going to be adding a Screamin' Eagle the Pro Street Bluetooth tuner to see if that helps me out a little bit with the way the bike runs. I feel like the bike is actually running really well, but I feel like it could be a little bit better. And so I'm going to see if this Screaming Eagle tuner is um, going to do any good for me. Now, a lot of people complain about this tuner and say that it is not as good as uh, some other tuners out there because this one is uh, EPA compliant. And um, I get that. But this bike has two years of warranty left on it, and I would rather try to keep that intact um, so the only option is to use the screaming eagle uh, at least until your warranties uh, run out so that being said we're going to install this on the bike today and then we're going to do a run with the a ride with the bike just to see if it if it makes any changes my plan is to actually record some rides and do the auto tune feature so that i can get a custom tune uh, for this motorcycle for the lowrider st using the Screaming Eagle tuner. All right, so we went ahead and opened up the box and now it says that uh, by opening this bag, it re renders the part unreturnable. So so I guess I'm stuck with it now. Um, but this is what it looks like. It's this tiny little thing and it plugs into a, um, a connector on the bike. It's got a little bit of uh, sticky tape or um, double-sided 3M tape on the underside of it so you can permanently mount it uh, underneath the seat or somewhere. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is take off the the side cover right here and that's going to be a 5 30 seconds uh, hex head. We'll go ahead and remove that. Okay so we've got the cover removed and it was actually kind of loose so interesting interestingly enough but uh, behind there we have you know all these connectors and wires and if you look I'll try to get the light on here for you up underneath there you see that red uh, that red connector right there kind of kind of zooming in out there that's that's actually kind of connect that red connector right there is actually just kind of plugged to nothing right now and that's what we're going to disconnect from nothing and go ahead and plug into the the uh, Screaming Eagle Bluetooth Pro St Street tuner. Okay, so I've actually pulled the the plastic piece out, uh, and you can actually see right here where it's connected to this plastic piece that I'm going to return to its original position in just a moment. But we're going to pull that out of the red connector, and then we can plug in the Bluetooth tuner to that plug. All right, so all you have to do is push down on this here. You can kind of see it wiggling a little bit. When you push down on that hard enough, then this black plastic piece will will pop out, okay? And that's where we're gonna go ahead and plug in our, um, our Bluetooth. Sorry, it's hard to do this with just me filming. But yeah, so you're, we're gonna go ahead and plug in the Bluetooth tuner. And by the way, while you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're plugged into a, uh, a tether, okay, so that you have plenty of juice going to your bike and there's no loss of power during any kind of upload once you connect to it. All right, so we'll go ahead and hear it click in, make sure it's secure, and then what we'll do is we'll find a place up underneath of the seat, take the seat off to find a place to kind of per permanently mount this with this sticky tape. So I've got the seat off and I fished the tuner up. Well, I didn't plug it, you know, it, it wasn't plugged in at the time, obviously it's harder to fish this big old thing, but uh, was able to fish the connector up through here and doesn't really stick very well here, but I think that this is probably a good spot. As you can tell, I've been through some, some dirt and, and some mud and stuff like that recently. And you can see that certain areas are getting dirty under here, but this is kind of clean here. So I'm gonna hope that this is a good spot and it doesn't really, I don't think it's going anywhere, but that's that's where I'm gonna, it's gonna be its home under the seat for now. 
All right, so I've got the Screaming Eagle app uh, connected to my, or downloaded on my phone, and it says not connected, so obviously we're going to need to connect it to the tuner. So to do that, we'll go ahead and turn the bike on. Connect BCI. Pair device. So to start the pairing, turn the key on with the engine off. Read see how it broadcasts a message to your mobile device. Okay, so we've got different calibrations. We have recordings, which are, we don't have any recordings yet, obviously. So if I hit recordings, no recordings to show. So that's something that's coming in the future, but it's go, it's already connected. It's picked up my bike, um, 2022 FX LRST, Load Rider ST. And so you have your standard configuration, which is um, Milwaukee 8 stage one, 117 stage one rather. Uh, with a SE air cleaner and an SE exhaust. All right, so uh, if I hit view, I can see um, all the different, it might take a second to load. Yeah, here we go. All the different uh, air fuel ratios for the different RPMs that it's going to program. Then obviously this is the stock map uh, for the uh, stage one. So that's what we're going to start with. And we'll go ahead and hit program this calibration. Keep your phone near your bike. Keep it within 20 feet. Obviously I'm plugged into a tether. Okay. Be sure the calibration you have chosen matches your vehicle's installed hardware and inappropriate calibration may make your vehicle non-compliant with EPA, blah, blah, blah. All right, programming motorcycle with final calibration. Turn the it says uh, your motorcycle be programmed with the final calibration. Please turn the ignition off and then back on, but do not start the engine. Off. And back on. Program motorcycle. Programming in progress. Downloading calibration from phone to BCI. Processing the files sent to BCI. Programming ECM calibration from BCI. I didn't do that. It's, it's doing things by itself. It's a little scary. Probe, probe, yeah, I can't speak. Programming complete. Your motorcycle's calibration has been programmed to the motorcycle. Your motorcycle now has your custom calibration installed. You can repeat this process as many times as you would like. Before continuing, you must turn off the vehicle and switch and run stop switch. Okay, wait 20 seconds, then turn on the ignition switch and run stop switch. All right, so off. It's weird, the it takes a second. Okay, now we're going to wait 20 seconds. Okay, it's been about 20 seconds. Turn on the ignition switch. Okay, and I believe I'm done at this point. So now we're going to go ahead and take her for a ride. Um, and we'll see what kind of effects it has on the way she runs. So I think I have some bad news. I was kind of messing around with the app a little bit and kind of seeing, you know, how to record and auto-tune the Lowrider ST. 
And when I went into the, the parts of the app that talk about all that um, under recordings, you know, it says no recordings to show and you go to tune and you go to wideband and it says calibration is not available. Check for updates. And it says full tuning, not supported for California VINs. So apparently this Lowrider ST is out of California. And because of that, I am now completely limited to the stage one stock map tune from Harley and no custom tuning beyond that uh, with this tuner. So that means that my future will include, well, I feel like I wasted money on this tuner because I really was looking forward to auto tuning it. So I'm pretty TO'd about that uh, because it's not a cheap tuner. And then, uh, even worse, you know, now I'm going to have to, uh, buy another tuner. So, uh, at some point, but hopefully the stock tune will be great. So let's go ahead and try to stay optimistic, get out and ride the stock tune. All right, guys, just fired the Lowrider ST up for the first time with this new Stage 1 tune. And uh, hopefully it's good to go. Uh, the cold start idle seems to be right around 1290 to 1330, 1340. So it's a little bit of a high idle on cold start. I don't, I have no idea what what it normally is so I couldn't tell you but let's roll before I die of exhaust poisoning all right I've made it to the end of my street and the idles calmed down a little bit I've got my uh, mic to record the uh, engine and the exhaust in a different location, so this whole ride might be a complete bust. But I've moved the mic to my audio recorder with my, uh, it's got a microphone from Purple Panda, and that is sitting in my handlebar bag with a dead cat on it. So, be interesting to see. Uh, how the sound differs. Normally I will run the Purple Panda mic to my back pocket and the problem with that is sometimes it'll move uh, when I'm moving around on the bike and uh, it will um, it, it, sometimes I'll sit on it so it, it's a little more muffled than I want so hopefully this is a better sound I'm not sure what it's going to sound like coming with the mic right behind the ferry. So I'd love to say that that the bike is alive and kicking and amazing with this new tune. But quite honestly, I can't really tell much of a difference. this road 
because it's a little more curvy and figured it'd be a little bit more spirited. I don't hear any uh, diesel pop or anything like that, so that's good. Actually, that's new. So now I, so there is a little bit of pop now, and I didn't have that before. And here's the, the thing that stinks is that uh, I don't have the ability to, to auto tune this bike to get that pop out because of the California VIN issue. It makes it so you cannot do any kind of custom tune with this tuner. So I'm stuck with the stock map or I can go back, I, I, I'm assuming I can go back to the stock Mac, stock map. Uh, idle is at feel like it ran a little bit better before I hit it with this uh, stage one tune but maybe I just need to ride a little bit and get used to it a little bit of flub flubbing going on that I looked at with uh, dyno horsepower numbers from a stock uh, 117 versus the stage one. Uh, I saw that there was a gain in horsepower and torque, not a huge one, but so I thought that I would feel something, but uh, it has a little bit more low end pull and the or, you know around the 2000 mile uh, 2000 rpm range but yeah i 
mean, overall, uh, I really feel like the Screaming Eagle Pro Street tuner was a huge bust for me. A very disappointed, uh, very bummed out that it will not. I can't use the auto tune feature to kind of tweak some of the uh, the flub flub out of the exhaust and things like that to better map the fuel and air uh, ratio. But one of these days I'll probably, since this is a California VIN, Screaming Eagle is a no-go for me now that I know that. I'll uh, probably go, go with a uh, power vision in the future. But I won't do that until I do, you know, maybe a, go to a two to, two to one exhaust from like Sawiki Speed or Thrash and Supply or something like that. SNS Racing, there's lots of good names out there. So, <laughs> if you have a bike from California, uh, a Softail, California, don't even bother with the Screaming Eagle tuner, it's a waste of money. You can't do any auto tuning at all. If you want to, uh, if you have a bike that you know is not from California, then you're good to go and hopefully it'll be a better experience for you. I still don't think it's the greatest tuner there is, but at least you can do with the auto-tune and uh, maybe customize it a little bit more. One last thing I'll say is that I feel like the pipes are louder. <laughs> so that may be a thing, but I, d I don't think, I don't know how that's possible. I have I have uh, earplugs in while I'm riding and, I, and they sound, still sound louder, so who knows. Perhaps this bike will, some say that the ECU will slightly adjust on its own. I don't know if it's true, if it can self-adjust. So maybe this, you know, maybe there'll be a slight improvement over time. But I think that's uh, probably unrealistic op optimism at this point. Oh well, you live, you learn. Beware the California bikes. You can't take them out. You can take them out of California, but you can't take the California out of the bike. <laughs> All right, guys, I really appreciate you watching, and uh, my hopes was that this video would be. A video that would help anyone that was thinking about getting the Screaming Eagle Pro Street Bluetooth tuner and help you just you know realize what it could do for your for your motorcycle for your Harley Davidson but uh, certainly uh, I have very limited opinion of it at this point so We did learn that if you have a California VIN, stay away from it. <laughs> Alright guys, that's going to be it for today's video and thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to Rev Free Moto. Give the video a like and uh, remember it's who you're becoming, that's what matters most. God bless and we'll see you in the next video.